Brücke. What about uh, water if I need it? Right. I, so where do I set them? Put them in my pocket. Put them in my pocket. What if I just put it in my pocket?
Okay. Good afternoon. I'm Rich Todd. I'm the CEO of InnoVest Portfolio Solutions. I'm pleased to be here, honored to be here to talk to you about the InnoVest experience, which I believe is an experience of ethics, integrity, and culture, and what's made us successful. And hopefully, you'll learn some tips on uh, being a a good employee, managing a business, starting a business as an entrepreneur, and even getting hired, which you should be looking for as you, and with many of you, as you look for your first employment opportunity. So InnoVest has uh, been managing money for institutions for about 25 years. And we have also ventured into the management of family portfolios the last 15 years. InnoVest is a consultant, is an investment consulting firm. And what that means to us is that we, we work for a fee. We're fee only. And our expertise is on products, managers, and strategies. And that we do completely custom work with our clients. We've had a special relationship with UNC and the SAFE class. We've been supporting the SAFE class for most of 20 years. The foundation at UNC has been our client for over 20 years. And we also provide consulting services to almost every university in Colorado, as well as universities and other employers throughout Colorado and the Rocky Mountain region. InnoVest has around 250 clients, of which about 150 are institutions, like UNC Foundation. And the balance, about 100, are families, family offices, and high net worth individuals. So as we get started with the presentation, The agenda is InnoVest founding. I'll tell you more about the way we got started. The InnoVest philosophy, our stewardship mission, culture and employees, the importance of growth at InnoVest, and leadership development. So as I mentioned earlier, InnoVest is about 25 years old. I was the managing director of a consulting department at an investment banking firm, a Wall Street firm. And we had a number of clients that we were providing consulting services for. And we were recommending a termination of one of the managers that was managing a client pension plan, one of the components in the money management array. What surprised us was the president of our Wall Street firm called us and said, you know that manager that you are terminating is the largest trading partner to our Wall Street firm. They were a large client. And he reminded me that not only was I a fiduciary to my client, but also a fiduciary to shareholders. And he wanted me to stop, with, stop the termination and do what was right from his perspective to shareholders as opposed to doing what's, what was right for the client. That was a, that was a difficult uh, time for us. Uh, we went ahead and made the change. We, we terminated the manager, we replaced the manager, and went along with our business, but it was really the catalyst for us to start InnoVest. So, my business partner, Wendy Dominguez, and I started InnoVest again 25 years ago with a firm 
that was founded with no conflicts of interest. So we were only serving our clients' best needs. Client-centered, not serving two masters, serving only our clients. 100% of InnoVest's fees are simply paid by our clients. We receive no commissions or no compensations based on the solution that we recommend or uh, any of the products that we recommend. And our core values at InnoVest are hard work. Uh, we started out as an, as an entrepreneur. We started with, with uh, 25 clients as we left our Wall Street firm. 25 clients, about 250 million in assets. And as an entrepreneur, you pay yourself last. You're, you're uh, managing a company, growing the company for the first time. And uh, it, was, it was an experience that I hope many of you, you go through. But the experience over the last 25 years has been terrific. A second core value, honesty and integrity. And again, as I mentioned earlier, I think InnoVest's story is a story of ethics and integrity. And our last core value is dedication to the client. So we started our journey at InnoVest. There were five of us, 250 million, 250 million in assets, about roughly 25 clients. Today, InnoVest has about 250 clients, as I mentioned earlier, 30 billion in assets that we consult to, and around 55 employees. We have three employees that, that were in the SAFE class at UNC that we support. Brett Minnick, Abigail Thomas, and Zach Heath are all colleagues of mine at InnoVest. And they're all, they're all from a great university and from a great program that we love to support. So I'm gonna start off talking a little bit about what our approach is from an investment point of view. And our mantra is process over prediction. And let me give you an example of, of, of how that played out in the recent downturn in, in March, caused by this pandemic that we're still in. We had we had a giant drop in the markets. We had arguably the worst recession, although short-lived, since uh, the Great Depression. It's probably the recession is likely over. These are three headlines from Goldman Sachs, one of those Wall Street firms that I was talking about. On March 31st, Goldman Sachs in a headline said, Goldman says the market has not bottomed. Well, they were wrong about that. The, the market actually bottomed on March 23rd. Just a month later, or actually two weeks later, Goldman said, Goldman Sachs says we saw the bottom and here's why. So in two weeks, they changed their mind that the market had not bottomed. Now they're saying it did bottom. And then finally, a month later, Goldman warns of a stock market drop as coronavirus cases steadily rise. So in each case, well, they were, they were not very accurate. Why is it that, that they make these predi predictions? On Wall Street, we believe that these predictions are made to get people to buy things. In other words, they're sales organizations. And they are interested in selling product to really enhance the bottom line that's part of that conflict that we see on Wall Street. And again, why our, why our mantra is process over prediction. Now, Bill Daniels, Bill Daniels, the Daniels Fund, is supporting this initiative. Bill Daniels is known for his ethics and integrity as well. He said, discipline teaches us to respect authority as well as command it. It's love in the purest form, and it gives us the metal to make tough decisions in just about every situation. Our tough decision is to be process-oriented and lean against what many want to do in these markets. When markets are difficult, people bail, people get nervous, and our job is to lean against the common thinking 
and through process, we can do a better job for our clients. Let me explain why. So this chart shows the bull markets and the bear markets going back all the way to 1950. The bear markets, as you can see by this graph, are relatively small. But the common thinking is get out of the market before it drops. That is an impossible feat to do time and time again. What this chart essentially shows you is that bull markets overwhelm bear markets. That the risk of being out of the market and missing the bull markets is a much bigger risk. And that's why market timing doesn't work. Again, Wall Street firms and many firms that are commission-based are driven by transactions and driven by selling products that make people feel better, but not necessarily add to performance. Another example, another way to look at this is if you look at drawdowns in the market. These are bear markets that were down 25% or more going back all the way into the Great Depression. There were 13 of them. They were down, it was emotional, but you can see on average one year later, stocks were up 52.2%, and five years later up 132%. So market timing could have been very painful if you sold and didn't get back in in time for the, for the bull market or the recovery. So what is embraced institutionally by most consulting firms like InnoVest, but not necessarily with Wall Street firms, is rebalancing. And these are, these are difficult to read charts. But essentially what rebalancing says is that when markets go down, you move back to your strategic allocation. In other words, you buy stocks when markets go down and you sell stocks when markets go up, but just incrementally. And what these charts prove in the last three bear markets is that by rebalancing, performance is actually better than just set it and forget it or stay the course. We believe there's more to do than stay the course. It's rebalancing. But rebalancing comes from process. When the market goes down, process tells us to add to equities. In this recent meltdown, again, I said the market bottomed on March 23rd. We actually, through that week, we rebalanced portfolios. And our clients have been major beneficiaries of that, including the UNC Foundation. But the reason that we did it was not because we were predicting the market would recover. It was because process told us that we needed to add to equities. If equities would have continued to go down, we would have done it again. So I hope that wasn't too much into the weeds, but that helps explain process is a better, more ethical way to manage money over prediction. So Bill Daniels said, give back to the world that gives you so much. The InnoVest mission is stewardship. We are more than an investment firm. We are thoughtful stewards responsible for our clients. In fact, we're legal stewards, we're fiduciaries. And what a fiduciary does is it makes decisions only on the best interests of the client. We are legal stewards. But we're also stewards to our professionals and their families. Our people at InnoVest are really crucial to our success and, the cru and crucial to the su success of our, of our clients. And we're also stewards to the community. Community meaning Colorado, meaning the investment community, and our client community. We are men and women for others, and it says here that we hire unselfish people. We, no, we not only just hire unselfish people, we maintain selfish people. We do believe that we can take somebody and, that is selfish and we can make them an unselfish person through our culture, through our process, but generally speaking, when we're out hiring, 
young grads, experienced professionals, we are looking for men and women for others that think of others first before themselves. And we have a way to get there in our evaluation. But if you're a selfish person, and I would argue that, that many that are graduating from, from, from college are relatively selfish. It's something to think about as you're, as you're out interviewing and looking for your, for your first job out of school. We also believe that it's probably harder today to hire young people than it has been historically. That sometimes the culture in your age group and in the environment that you're, you're in feeds on selfishness. We believe that what doesn't kill you makes you stronger and that we challenge young people. We challenge all of our people and the next time we go through a challenging environment is not as hard. We focus on those that want a vocation and what a vocation to us means is that they live more of an integrated life. That when you're at InnoVest, you're not just at InnoVest when you're in the office. You represent InnoVest away from the office, on the weekends, at home at night. We care about your reputation as a person and how it reflects on InnoVest. A careerist often is somebody that, in, in our mind, steps on others in order to get promoted for that higher position. Our philosophy at InnoVest is that we pull each other up. That the best way to get promoted at InnoVest is pull somebody up, pull somebody up that is beneath you. It makes it easy to promote you because your shoes are being filled. So our culture is one of pulling each other up. Culture at InnoVest is critical. Bill Daniels said, I've told people that they don't work for me, they work with me. Peter Drucker, who you may know, was a famous management consultant, business consultant. Peter Drucker said that culture eats strategy for breakfast. Culture is really crucial to an organization. And it's hard to study, it's hard to learn about culture in school. I mentioned that stewardship is our mission. It's also the glue that holds us together at InnoVest. That's our culture. We have a stewardship culture. Empowerment is a big part of our culture. Empowerment can be very difficult for entrepreneurs. Empowerment was very difficult for me. InnoVest grew very quickly, successfully for about 10 years. And as you've grown, as an entrepreneur, your ego gets big. And my ego got big. I thought it was all about me. And consequently, our firm began to plateau. And I'll talk later on about why growth is important to us. Wendy Dominguez, who I mentioned, founding partner, Wendy was instrumental in helping us with an empowerment program. And today, InnoVest has grown significantly from that plateau period because of Wendy's stress on empowerment, letting others make decisions within the firm. It, not only helps our firm, but it, it creates a much more valuable, much more rewarding environment for our people. So today, our, our culture is very much, very much hinged on empowering others. I also mentioned competition. Competition is important to us. I've heard, as we've interviewed young people in particular, that they believe competition within a business can be a, a bad thing. It can be. We have a team-based firm. Everybody works as part of a team. But they also compete with each other for, for the work that they get, the responsibilities that they get, and they compete like, with themselves. Recently, in a, in a firm, for, uh, all firm meeting, 
I talked about the importance of being better a year from now than you are today. And hopefully all of our people, even through this stressful environment of COVID, are better today than they were a year ago. That's part of our culture. Competition is, is a good thing. And consequently, at InnoVest, we've hired lots of athletes at InnoVest. We like the, we like the character that athletics uh, provides young people. And in fact, two of the safe class hires that we've made in the last two or three year, years, Brett Minnick and Zach Heath, were both baseball players at UNC. And they're fantastic uh, employees, fantastic team members. And Abigail Thomas is incredible as well. We're very fortunate to have those three at InnoVest. Our team does 360 reviews. So they actually evaluate each other. And that's a big part of their compensation and bonus at the end of the year. We're going through those 360 reviews right now. Another thing that is really important in the reviews is attitude. Attitude is really important. It's not just about doing your job. It's about the influence that you have over other people. Influence can be negative. And it's really important to us that attitudes are strong. And attitudes are a big percentage of our calculation in that, in that uh, year-end bonus. And finally, we feed our culture. Again, a stewardship culture. We do community service. In fact, at InnoVest in the last 12 months, we volunteered, our professionals have volunteered over 600 hours. So that's over, that's over 10 hours a person. We've painted houses as a team. We've built trails. We've fed the poor. We are very involved in, in stewardship to the community. And our community service and, and stewardship to the community is in large part, a reason that we're close as a firm and it's the glue that holds us together. Employees at InnoVest, what do we care about? We care about the five H's. Happy, we hire happy people. We really believe that happiness is a choice and that if, if a person is not happy, they can become happy, but at this point, we are focused on hiring happy people. So be happy. Hungry, do you really wanna work at InnoVest in, in that case? Or do you really want to work at the firm that you're in, interviewing, where you're interviewing? Let that prospective employer your current employer understand that, that you're, you're happy about your job, you're hungry for more responsibility, and you're hungry to help the firm succeed. And you're pulling others up underneath you. Every employer loves that. That you're honest. Again, that's a core value of InnoVest. If, if one of our colleagues is not honest, it's gonna come out in their manager review or in their 360 reviews. They will not be at InnoVest very long. We have very low turnover. We retain 90% of our employees. So every year we're hiring two, three, four, five employees. We're a small firm, but honesty is uh, really crucial. We like humility, humble, People that understand that there are others that, that are better at certain aspects of the day-to-day the -day work at InnoVest, that they're not all things to everybody. That empowerment example that I, I uh, gave you earlier, that was really a test of my humility. And again, that is, it's a very common issue as Entrepreneurs grow the firms, so be humble about your success. Be humble about who you are. At InnoVest, we have a program that we call Strength Finders. And everybody is tested in about, I think it's 35 different characteristics. And 
We do this so that we can understand the strengths of people. We're not trying to change weaknesses. When we put together our teams, we want teams that have complementary characteristics. Humility is something that we look for. And then hard working. That's part of InnoVest. We work hard. We work hard for our clients. We work hard for our colleagues. We work hard for the community. And we measure how hard people work. It is, a, it is something that, again, in that 360 review, or in that, in that uh, manager review, we measure how hard somebody works. And the four C's. Character, what is their character like? Their integrity, very, very similar to honesty. Capacity, their intellect, their experience. We may be hiring for a certain position. We may be hiring for a character. We want to train somebody at InnoVest to be an analyst. Capacity, their ability to function within our environment is important. It could include some testing. We want to know how they've done in school. We typically want to hire the top students, but we also believe that life experiences matter. As I mentioned before, we hire a lot of athletes because we like the characteristics that, that athletics brings. Hard work, teamwork, winning and losing, competition, those are all good things. We also appreciate the military. We hire those that have a military background. One of our colleagues is a former Navy SEAL. It, it just enhances our, our firm, our diversity capacity is uh, very important. Chemistry, what are social skills like? If, if somebody can't tell their story very well, if their, their ability to communicate is not strong, that will hurt them. There are classes that you can take to get better at this. Again, back to your generation the, the, of, let's say, 22, 23-year-olds coming out of school, communication skills can be better. And we typically hire those with the best communication skills. It's not here, but we also judge their writing ability. So often the, the task is a simple paragraph or a page about themselves, why we should hire them. And we like to see their ability to, to write coherent paragraphs and even coherent sentences with, with good spelling. And they're typically handwritten. And finally, are they a contributor? Can we live without them? Are they crucial to us? There are some that we interview. We call them a first round draft pick. We have to hire them because they are terrific. We may not have a spot for them, but we will make a spot. We may not know where they fit in our firm, but we will figure it out because they are, are a top-notch person. They're a great contributor. Let me take a drink of water here. Thank you. So this slide talks about the importance of growth. Bill Daniels said, America remains the greatest nation on earth where boundless opportunities still exist for each and every one of us. InnoVest has grown 23 out of 24 years. Growth is important to us. It's a promise that we've made to our partners. We have young partners. And the reason they're partners is they are looking at the future, at the opportunity that they see down the road. We have a promise to them that we will grow. We're very focused on growth. There are times, though, where some believe that growing is at the detriment to the client, that, that our services are getting stretched. So we need to make certain that key ratios, key employee to client ratios, 
consultant to client ratios and, and financial ratios all make sense so that the clients are benefiting from that growth. We've hired terrific people because of our growth. We have, we have better tools, better technology, better research, all because of our growth. Our clients are certainly benefiting from our growth. We are a much better firm than we were, than we were when we started our firm. We're a much better firm than we were five years ago. That's the promise. And hiring great people with, without growth, we wouldn't have the chance to bring in new employees. Like I said, we hire three, four, five people per year, maybe more. So typically we have about six clients per employee and when as we grow, we, we see the need to pick up uh, new employees, to hire new employees because of that growth. Uh, that's a catalyst for hiring, but we also want to hire ahead. So typically at Innovest, we have, uh, we have a list of prospects. We know what our typical close rate is, so we can look ahead at how many people that we need in the next 12 months. So we want to find those first round draft picks we hire ahead that will come in and fill that void that we have as we grow. So Bill Daniels said very few successful people haven't had to face difficult challenges along the way, but a business reversal or personal setback will often bring out the best in a person. I said this before, we really believe in what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. And sometimes that's contrary to what we hear from others as we're interviewing people, as we're considering uh, new clients. They believe that what doesn't kill you make, makes you weaker and they don't, they don't value the challenges that people go through and the better people they become, the better employees that they come because of those challenges. We like to challenge our people. We like to put stress on people. And it makes them better as, as a person and as an employee and maybe even as a partner. So leadership development is crucial at InnoVest. It's not only crucial in leading departments, leading our client relationships, but it is the future of InnoVest and leading our firm. We have a program called NextGen. It's the NextGen Society. Our partners choose people to be in NextGen, and those are young professionals that are the future partners of InnoVest. And we teach them values as a good leader. Some of these values are here. A shared vision. The reason people follow you as a leader is because you have a vision that is exciting to them. Share your vision. On the sports field, coaches can be great leaders by sharing that vision, sharing that vision of success, why you're working so hard. That vision is a conference championship or a winning season or a national championship. Those, those are all exciting to athletes and they're exciting to our people. We shared at InnoVest a 10-year vision. What does InnoVest look like in 10 years? We talk about the lines of business that we'll be in, where we expect to be in different lines of business throughout the country, the types of research we'll be doing, the types of clients that we'll be attracting, the opportunities that are created from that. Going from today 15 consultants that have client responsibility to maybe 30. Instead of 20 analysts, we have 50 analysts. Growing, sharing a vision is exciting. Lead by example. We all know of, of people who have words to say, but their example is not what you'd like. Perhaps they're not living that integrated life that I mentioned before. 
perhaps they're not treating people the way they should be treated. That's leading by example. Integrity, honesty and integrity, really key principles, key core values of InnoVest. Communicate effectively. Some people aren't the communicators that they should be. We know that through strength finders. They, they can get better. Perhaps it should be more structured. It is difficult for analytical people to communicate well. It's difficult for people that are shy to communicate well. Set up a process for communication, a process that forces you to communicate. If you're out looking for a job, communicate with those that you're, that you're, you're interviewing with, those that you're pursuing. Make hard decisions. Sometimes it's easier just to bury your head, but it's never the right thing to do. So communicate and make hard decisions and communicate those hard decisions in the right way. Recognize success. It's great to give compliments to people. It's probably not something that I'm great at doing. Set up a process to recognize success. At InnoVest, we send out a communication on a weekly basis. We call it Why We Love Mondays at InnoVest. And typically, there are 20 to 30 different items where we're recognizing people for a job well done the prior week. It could be as simple as going out of the way to help somebody finish a project, or working late, or working from home, or winning a new client, or doing something outside the ordinary for a client, delivering paperwork to their home, making a phone call when they lost a loved one. There are many things that you can do to recognize success. And, and we do it not only verbally, but in this communication, why we love Mondays at InnoVest. It is exciting to people every, every Monday when they open up their email to see who's been recognized. Empower others. That's a key virtue that I talked about before. That's part of leadership. That's part of our next gen program. Motivate and inspire. Coaches can be great motivators. They can inspire people. You can be a great leader without being a raw, raw leader. By leading by example and by doing the right thing, that is part of motivation. And finally, recruit people into your network. Recruit people that you can influence and change for the positive. That's all leadership. So that's my, that's my talk. If there are questions, I would, I would love to take any questions. I really appreciate you listening to me. If you have questions on the outside, here's my email address, rtodd at innovestinc.com, or you can call me at 303-694-1900, and I'd love to I'd love to help you if I can. First question, do you have a minimum amount of investment required for clients? We don't have a formal minimum, but typically for uh, foundations, our, our market is 10 million and, and up. And for high net worth families is typically uh, 5 million and up. So, uh, because we're fee only, we have to focus on the larger side of clients. If you have a smaller dollar amount, there's a chance that I can help you or ref refer you to somebody. Uh, please uh, call me or uh, email me and I'd be happy to help you. Well, it looks like that was the only question. Oh, here's another one. I'm sorry. In the hiring process, 
how do you determine selfishness? We go in fairly deep into background, um, into uh, where you, you've done historically your, your, uh, your work outside of school. Uh, we want to see people that have a, self, uh, a, a selflessness that uh, is inspiring, that they truly are focused on others. Uh, a lot of it is understanding what they do away from the office or away from school. What do you find is the most effective way to get new employees on board with your company culture? We feed it. Uh, we feed our culture. That community service is uh, a big part of it. But um, I can tell you that if somebody is uh, selfish, uh, or if they're not on board, uh, we know it fairly quickly. And uh, we do have a firm expectation that they, that they do uh, get on board. Most people love our culture. We do have uh, some exceptions. And when, when they don't love our culture, uh, we typically will part ways. Uh, but we, you know, the, the We Love Mondays at InnoVest is, is uh, a cultural item. Uh, many meetings. We're a meeting-based firm. We have, we have lots of meetings. Uh, where people know that vision, they know what's going on in every aspect of our consulting with clients. Uh, we make people responsible. We have a mentorship program that I was going to mention that uh, I didn't. A mentorship is a, is a great way to help our employees get on board. But most of the people that come in, they're on board uh, when they uh, are interviewing. They know enough about uh, InnoVest and our culture that they are hungry enough uh, uh, to be uh, wanting to be a big part of our culture. How do you find a healthy balance of putting pressure on employees to increase their performance and the ability without overloading them with stress? That's a good question. Uh, I don't think we've ever overloaded anybody with stress. We, there are times where we might ask an employee to work late or uh, they may, like I said earlier, they may need to, to work from home, but we also believe in having a balanced life. Uh, we want our people to, to live without uh, constant stress. And uh, it's through experience. I mean, we know when, we, uh, we know the right amount. And uh, we challenge our employees to, to be uh, uh, efficient, uh, but put in that right amount of uh, analysis, in some cases, uh, to get the answer that we need. And it, it, really, it really comes from having 25 years of experience in managing people. I think we do a great job at that. So that may be the last question. Here's another one. What is an example of competition within the workplace? Great question. We promote people. And uh, our, our typical titles are analyst assistant. That's typically hired out of school. Analyst, senior analyst, senior lead analyst, manager, there's competition as we promote for those opportunities. There's also competition within a space to perhaps spend time with a client. Young people out of school typically aren't client facing, but they become client facing over time with good communication skills, with good life experiences, with good work. And that's all competition. Uh, also competition, like I said before, competition with yourself. We ask people to tell us how they believe they can get better. It's not just the manager telling them where they can get better. But th that is all competition in the workplace, and we believe it is very healthy.
how to promote or encourage your employees to give back to the community. Uh, we help them do that. We have, with our older people, we, uh, we believe in board positions. Uh, we, we will find them board positions for younger uh, people. We sit down their mentor with their mentor and uh, we identify the areas that are important to them and we help them uh, identify those opportunities. Uh, we, we also, we're, uh, as a firm, we're out uh, developing these opportunities and with many of these organizations, our people love it and they go beyond uh, what we've put forth to them in our, in our program. Uh, examples can be uh, junior achievement, can be great if you're uh, a finance or economics major, that is, that is helping uh, high school age children, even younger children than that, understand uh, free enterprise, how, how business works. You know, like I've said, we fed the poor, we've, we've worked at the Samaritan House, we've worked at Denver Rescue Mission, uh, we've painted homes for an organization called Brothers Redevelopment, where we go paint the home of an elderly person. Uh, we built trails for, for a Cherry Creek State Park. We, uh, we adopt families over the holidays. Um, there are many, many things that we do as, as an organization and it's never typically a problem uh, in promoting or, or encouraging our employees to give back. What tips would you give for UNC students to develop their leadership skills during college? Uh, I love uh, the courses that John Maxwell has developed. So um, I think if you Google John Maxwell, he has great courses on leadership skills. And in our next gen program, we take are people through John Maxwell courses to begin with. And typically there are about, I believe 12, 20 to 30 minute courses that really challenge you to, to, uh, to improve those leadership skills and values. Um, uh, some of you are natural leaders, some of you, you, you need some help. And I, I would say that John Maxwell can help everybody and it's very inexpensive. Are there other industry leaders or peers you would recommend to students looking to research the field they wish to enter? Uh, there are many uh, people that uh, went to UNC that are great industry leaders. Uh, uh, Dick Monfort, you know, is a, is a great leader. Kenny Monfort, who the, the, the business school is, is uh, named, Kenny is no longer with us, but Dick is. Dick is a, is a great business leader. Uh, uh, he is, I, I believe, still on the board of UNC. And, uh, uh, he, you know, he, he is a phenomenal person. Uh, there are others that have taught the SAFE class that are wonderful industry leaders, and especially in finance. Kevin O'Hearn, uh, I, I believe he might be the, the, the next guest uh, faculty for the SAFE class. He's taught the SAFE class before. He is very accomplished and is a great uh, industry leader. Um, uh, Sandy Rufinacht is another person. He uh, runs a money management firm and he's been a safe class uh, faculty member as well. And you know, he runs a great firm. Uh, there are other leaders uh, that uh, are really impressive in what they've accomplished. Some of you may be familiar, familiar with uh, Bill Hanslick. Bill Hanslick runs the Gold Crown Foundation. They love volunteers. And Bill was a former professional basketball player and coach for the Denver Nuggets. And uh, Bill is a phenomenal leader and uh, uh, has influenced so many, uh, so many entrepreneurs, so many 
athletes, young athletes, children, underprivileged children uh, that uh, need that need that boost to uh, uh, to be successful. How does InnoVest incorporate? Oh, here here we go. How does InnoVest incorporate employees with disabilities into your business? Uh, that's a good question. I think it depends on uh, the disability. I think there's absolutely uh, there are opportunities for those with disabilities if they have the criteria, the five H's and, and the uh, the four C's. Um, you know we're a you know we're a diverse company. And if you can add value to InnoVest and you're, you have a disability, uh, you know, that's, uh, I would say, no problem for us. Would you do anything different in your career? Uh, well, I'd actually like to be a professional baseball player, but that didn't work out, so I'm, I'm joking. But, uh, uh, Sure, there are always things if you go back you would have done differently. Uh, InnoVest looks different than what we, we thought it would be. Uh, we were really didn't know. You know. We were young, starting out in a new business. We're just trying to survive. We're just trying to pay our bills. And uh, uh, we love the nonprofit world. We love the family world. Uh, there's a lot of community in those spaces. There's a lot of uh, uh, camaraderie, and um, we 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 have a lot of retirement plan clients. We love them. That's a big part of our firm. But our, we were later uh, uh, on, or, or entree into to the foundation world was a little slower than the retirement plan world. We probably would have focused there more. And uh, you know we've made mistakes. Uh, we've learned from those mistakes. I mentioned some of the mistakes that, that we've made. Uh, you know, I, I talked about the phases of a business, the entrepreneur growing the business, you know, feeding his, his or her ego, and then plateauing because they can't do it all, and then empower, empowering. And the next phase is typically bureaucracy because you're empowering everybody. You have, you have Decision making from, you know, big teams of people, things slow down. It's hard to maneuver, and I think that uh, we're, we've, in in some ways, we've uh, uh, in the last couple of years begun to plateau again, and we're taking the next step to really become more focused, have more focused teams, so we can continue our uh, trajectory. I think we could have done some of that earlier, uh, uh, but we've done a lot of things right. Um, uh, you know, I love the investment business. I love, uh, I love the, the front range, the, the, the community from Colorado. I'm a fifth generation Coloradoan. Uh, you know, we're, we're very fortunate uh, that we're here and I've been in the business for a long time, but you know, in hindsight, I would have liked to start even earlier. What do you find is the most challenging part of keeping ethics practices central to your business and life? Well, I, I would say that COVID has been a big challenge. Um, it's been a challenge for a lot of businesses. It's been a challenge for our culture and ethics practices. Uh, there are many different schools of thought in dealing with COVID. It is something that I talk to other CEOs about. I, uh, I'm fairly active in some CEO organizations and this is a big topic for us. Uh, in some cases, we believe that uh, especially young people need courage. You know, we are, we are in our office, 90% uh, of our people are in our office. Those that have some challenges, uh, uh, 
maybe conditions, health conditions that uh, will keep them away, or maybe a spouse. We encourage them not to come in, that we can, they can do their work remotely. We believe that we are significantly better working in the office over being remote, and that has been hard on some people, uh, you know, in that, uh, you know, like I said, we've had to challenge them uh, to be courageous and uh, be around other people, even though we follow all the rules for, uh, you know, distancing and, and masks and washing hands, those are all important to us. Uh, but it's, it has created some division in, in our culture that, that is uh, something that we're tackling. And um, you know, it, it has become really, we believe, uh, almost a political issue. It's certainly an issue with, uh, with the election coming up. Uh, as far as life is concerned, I think that uh, you know, I work hard, I work I've worked many hours my whole uh, career, but um, uh, making sure my family is first. I've coached my kids. I fought both of my children were college athletes, and we followed them around the country. My son is a professional baseball player. He's a minor leaguer with the Rockies uh, organization. And uh, my wife, Joni, and I, that's where we love to spend our time uh, chasing our, our, uh, our children. Uh, we chased them in college. My daughter went to Purdue University and was a swimmer. And uh, we, we loved uh, that experience. And now she's got a granddaughter. That is a terrific experience as well. So uh, at the Todd household, we don't waste a lot of time. It's either uh, in of us or family. And we, we, we spend great quality time together as a family. Thank you. It was, it was a pleasure. Uh, I think you have my contact information. And if there's uh, you know, anything I can do for you, let me know. Thank you very much.